<laughs> Good evening. Welcome, everybody, to the Parks and Recreation Advisory Committee. Uh, we have a quorum called a meeting to order. And first item of business is the approval of the agenda. Does anybody hear a motion? Motion to approve. Second. Second. All approved. Aye. Aye. Opposed? Ayes have it. Next item, approval of minutes. And we have them, and they were also sent to us. Does anybody have any motion? Make motion a motion approved. to approve as written. Uh, second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Ayes have it. Minutes are approved. Next item is the director's report. Susan. Thank you, Mr. Ross. Uh, good, good evening, everybody. Uh, thank you for coming um, to our meeting yet again this lovely, chilly January, February, February uh, <laughs> evening. Sorry, <laughs> felt like January. So, um, not, not again. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, we have a couple folks out. Uh, Michael is out, and Amanda's out. So you're, you've got me. But we do have a specially a special guest, which I'll introduce. And uh, this is uh, Deanna Young. She's with our engineering department. She's going to give us in a minute an update on the uh, capital improvements project. Mr. Wheeler was kind enough to give us a suggestion, and we thought it was a great one. So uh, last minute, she was kind enough to come out this evening, and she's going to give us a really nice overview on all of our uh, capital improvement projects uh, after that then I'll go ahead and kind of give you a, a, the, uh, the new pride the new updates on everything else going on in the department and fill you in best I can um, with everything we have going on so with uh, with nothing else to tell you on now <laughs> I'm gonna let her take the floor and let oh. y'all enjoy a nice new PowerPoint that is on yep fast forward there so um, thank you well, good evening. We'll let Alan fix that for us. Um, <laughs> again, my name is uh, Deanna Young, and I'm the Capital Projects Administrator, and I work in the Engineering Division. So one of the responsibilities that our division is tasked with is putting together the Capital Improvement Plan. The Capital Improvement Plan is um, an, an, it's a planning document that allows us to identify the needs in, um, of projects over the next five-year period. So these projects are normally major non major non reoccurring investments in physical infrastructure and facilities. It normally has to be greater than fifty thousand dollars. Has a, a project life that exceeds twelve months, um, and that has a useful life of at least five years. So the whole CIP consists of streets, sidewalks, um, pump stations, lift stations, and any of the uh, any of the recreation projects that we've identified. So as I stated before, the CIP is a five-year plan, and it is, it's a planning document. So we have all the different divisions in the city come to us with their needs, such as um, a pump station is failing or a street needs to be repaved, or in this case, recreation and parks identify a need, such as we need to um, construct a new restroom at Wooten Park or looking at um, a trail, trail and greenway connection, et cetera. So we normally start the process in December. Um, the division or the department comes to us in, with ideas, and our division is responsible for kind of meeting with the, the department individually, kind of gain a preliminary understanding of what the project scope is, and then to assign um, a reasonable cost that would, that would go along with that scope. So again, it's a five-year planning document. So the way we look at it is the funding year which is the year that we actually get the money. So in this particular case, FY16, which is the, some of the, the documentation I presented to you this evening, that's the funding year. That's the year you're going to get money to move forward on the project, but only in the year that it's been identified. So if you have a multi-year contract, the money that's actually going to be given for that project is just in year one or the build year, which is that, that current fiscal year. Any of the other four outlying years, they're just placeholders. Normally, that's because the project, we haven't had an opportunity to really investigate it. And we're going to go over some of these projects in more detail in just a minute. Mm. So um, we're having some technical difficulties. So we're just going to um, kind of rely on the documentation that I provided you. So what I've presented to you is um, an excerpt of the CIP, the proposed capital improvement plan that we gave to council um, several weeks ago. 
The cover sheet are a listing of all the projects that have been slated over the next five years for recreation and parks. And again, we're gonna go over most of these in, in the next few minutes. But I just wanted to kind of give you an insight of how to read the, the report that I've given you. So if you turn to, um, and this, the page numbers on the bottom are from the actual CIP, so um, page 83, which happens to be the next page. You'll see at the very top, we, act, we name the project and we assign a, um, a responsible party. Who's our main point of contact for that division or this area? So in this particular case, we're looking at the Lejeune Trail and Greenway. And Susan happens to be our main point of contact. The next, we have a, a description. And this is where we try to describe in enough detail to allow those who are reading it what the intent of the project is. And underneath that, we have a justification. What happens if we don't do this project? What are the, the, the pros and cons of this project? And underneath that, we've got the expenditures. The expenditures is our forecast of what costs we're going to spend on this project. So as you may or may not know, the Lejeune Trail and Greenway is currently out for bid. Um, bids are due back March 5th. We'll go to council for um, a, um, a tentative award. Uh, middle of March with DOT's concurrence and then we can hopefully start the project you know, by May or by April 13th. Our goal is to try to be, be completed with the trail that's in the Memorial Gardens area by July. So under the expenditure line item it shows that we have got uh, prior expenditures in the amount of $838,000. In reality that cost we haven't spent yet. But because this is a planning document, we're hoping, we know one, that we're gonna be under contract by the end of the fiscal year, and then two, we know we're gonna be spending some of that money. So we are projecting, as of now, to spend that kind of money. But as of right now, the total cost for the project to include the expenditures to date and what's estimated is um, just over $2 million. And underneath that, we have our funding source. These are the, an area for us to identify all the potential funding for a particular project. So in this particular case, we've got capital reserve fund, we've got the NCDOT grant, and we have a little bit of PL 104, which is another funding from DOT. And at the very bottom, it's, it's another financial component that allows us to project um, any, um, any amortization schedule that we might have for the particular project. So, kind of gave you a lot to think about there, but it hopefully will help you as we go through some of these projects. Did all that, does anybody have any questions up to this point? Uh, this, this is for 2016, it's gonna be completed? No, 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 and um, that's a great question, Chairman. The, um, the FY16, it's a five years, so we call it FY16, because FY16 is the funding year. We're getting money in that project, but some of these projects might not, their funding year might not be until FY18. So as of now, it's when we start the project, not necessarily when we complete it. The way we look at our, our current CIP, if we have a, a particular project that we're working on that's going to be complete by the first quarter of the following fiscal year, we do not put it in the CIP for the next year because the project will roll off. Um, so in, week, in one minute, we'll go over the Jacksonville landing and maybe that'll, as we look through that, maybe that'll make more sense for you. Just to give you some, um, some perspective as, as the number of capital improvement projects, in FY14, we had a total of 81 projects. And in FY15, we had 77 projects. And then we're proposing in FY16, 71. And again, those aren't new projects. Some of them are rollover. Whereas, you know, in construction, you might have weather delays where you're anticipating the, the project to be completed in eight months and it ends up being 15 months and so we end up rolling the project over you were you stated earlier that uh, uh did come back on 5 march or whatever it was dated mm -hmm. was and then uh construction would start or you anticipated a completion of the first portion in may well, we have we'll execute a contract in April. Okay. And we'll and we'll it's one contract for the entire two mile trail. Okay. And we've put an an intermediate construction time for just the Memorial Gardens okay. area because we want okay. that to be the the contractor's priority. Okay. So they're going to start that area first. Okay. And let and so that way it's you know. But you were talking talking about fiscal year sixteen. Mm-hmm. Oh. 
When, when does that start July 1? Yes, July 1 is our new fiscal year. But the funding for the Lejeune Trail and Greenway, uh -huh. some like some of these other projects, we've already received all that funding. Okay. All that so funding, and we just roll it over. Okay. Yeah, it's okay. not new money, um, right. but that's a great okay. question. So if we get funding in a prior year and we haven't spent it, we just shift the funding to the to the upcoming year. It's if not. If they will allow we, you to do so. Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. Um, if we've already um, entered into a contract, then normally we leave that under a prior year because it's already okay. come and spoken for. Okay. Well, when, when, excuse me. When is it? <laughs> when is the due date, and when is it supposed to be completed? Uh, is it on the Lejeune Trail? Yes, ma'am. The Lejeune Trail has uh, 365 days for project completion. So if we execute the contract in um, April, then it'll be the April of the following year. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. April be completed. Yes, complete. complete. Sixteen. April of sixteen. Or six. Sixteen. Yes. April sixteen. That's right. Okay. So we might be back. Oh, let's have. You want to go back a slide? Go. Okay. This way. Uh, thank you. Is it working? Um, just leave it here, but. Um, so out of out of the total projects that we had mentioned, um, again, they're not brand new projects. They're projects that, that either the um, you know again, there might have been a placeholder where we we didn't get the grant that we thought we were going to get, so we've moved it forward. Or it might be that we haven't moved forward um, on the project as much there as we, we wanted. Yes. Yeah, so let's leave, let's see it here. <laughs> okay. All right. Okay. FY16 project. Yes. This is currently what we have on the table right now as we speak moving forward. So these are the projects that have been identified in FY16. And by identified means that the Lejeune Trail and Greenway and the Phillips Park Shelter are two projects that staff is currently working on right now and will continue working on in, a, in the following fiscal year. So both of these projects we have money for. Um, the two other projects, Jacksonville Landing and the Park Splash Pads, the Jacksonville Landing, as you know, we've completed the boat ramp. Um, and so our, the next phase of this project is to start designing the Welcome Center component. So we are asking for funding that was already identified as a, as a prior, as a future year, to be moved up to next year so we can start that process. But as, it, as of now, we all we have is a box on a master plan that says we think it's going to be this big so we'll start that process of trying to you know refine the scope how big do we, we want it what do we see going in that area etc and on a side note um, for those of you who may have been receiving questions um, yes the Jacksonville landing is having lights installed we have been waiting for Duke Energy to get the the poles in place and it is my understanding that they are going to start installation this Thursday. So I, don't, I know a lot of people were happy about that. Right, Will that go. Welcome Center be right on, on in somewhere in, in that same area? It's um, it's closer towards the gas station. Okay. Yeah. Okay, okay. It doesn't look, it's just a, yeah, some okay. grass at the moment. All right. Thank you. All right. So one of the projects that we have that we've identified in a prior year or a future, excuse me, is a, the park splash pads. And this could be found on page 85 of the documents that I've provided. Staff had initially identified three splash pads um, with locate, with, excuse me, with locations yet to be determined. During the advisory summit that was held, um, you know, a month or month or so ago. The concern or what we heard was the need and the desire for a splash pad. Well, at Jackie and Miette, we had already identified in, within our master plan of putting a splash pad at that park. So um, we are actually moving the construction of one of these splash pads from 17 to 16. And the location is what I've highlighted in blue here for you now. So for those of you who are familiar with the park, we've got the new ball field is down in this area. Okay. Okay, where were we? <laughs> yeah, can we go back? Thank you. One more. Thank you. Okay, so down in this area is the new ball field. Okay. And we've got, um, you know, the new basketball courts that we've already constructed in the new alignment of the parking area. 
So this project would consist of putting a, a splash pad in the, in the area where it was identified as blue, and we'd also would have to put in some connectivity. So the sidewalk up to the splash pad and around the splash pad are areas that we would, that would be constructed as part of this splash pad. Um, also perhaps some benches for allow the, the kids to sit around with the parents, et cetera. Like a lot of our projects, projects start off as an idea so the idea is we want a splash pad. And now that we have a location, staff will start working on, you know, what can we get the biggest bang for a buck? Um, and for those of you who are familiar, we've gone down this path before. Um, so we're hoping that we can look at multiple vendors, different types of material, and, and kind of get a splash pad within the identified budget of 125,000. We also have some potential with another department of uh, community development looking at some grant funding that they might have. Mm -hmm. So we're real yeah. excited that there's some opportunity there yeah. to yeah. help right. with this project. Right. So um, that's in the works and they, she's been working with Deanna on that as well. Mm -hmm. I have a question. 2019, we're going to spend 125 more thousand? Yes, sir. This project actually consists of the construction of three splash pads. Okay. And we initially identified as constructing a splash pad every other year. So we're just moving one from 17 to 16. And um, at this time, we have not discussed moving the others up. Another project that we're working on um, is the Phillips Park Shelter. As you know, we um, unfortunately had to return the Part F grant for this project. But there is a need and desire to enhance this park. So we're working with recreation to do something with the shelter. The shelter is dated, it needs to be improved. Um, so we've hired a structural engineer to look at the various ideas and components of the existing roof to come back. It's, we can't do anything underground, so if we can take the roof off and put a new roof on, that's, that's our goal. Um, and we've been working with building inspections to see what, what we can and can't do. We're also looking at some aesthetic improvements on the existing supports. Um, we're talking about maybe wrapping them or putting some type of um, like a brick facade halfway up or you know a couple feet up and then wrapping the top. We're also looking at um, demolishing the existing asphalt floor, which is um, a little hard to walk on, and replace that with smooth concrete and any connecting sidewalks that may need to be um, installed as well. You said you couldn't do anything underground. Yes. This is dump. We had, there's some, we had to return the Part F grant because the, um, the park is constructed over two landfills. Okay. And okay. so, that yeah, helps. so um, <coughs> rather than taking the financial support of, of remediating that project, we have relied back on the state to sit through that process. Did you want to talk about it? Um, yeah, so I'll go ahead and piggyback here. Uh, Mr. Spring had uh, asked before the meeting started about Phillips Park, and he's absolutely right. We have um, done some of the preliminary work just on uh, aesthetics and cleaning up that park as far as some of the amenities. As you know, it was a domino effect as far as those ball fields go. So we have taken the liberty of taking the fences down off of both the, the ball fields, Joe Morgan and... Um, um, Gosh, Phillips. Lions, 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 Joe Morgan and Lions, sorry about that. So we've taken the um, fence down. We're also taking the dugout. So every uh, all of that block work that was out there, we really just want to open the park up. The intention is still to use those fields as uh, practice fields, but now that we have Jack Emmett online uh, and Kerr Street has a fence, we are able to utilize those as game fields. So practice, yes, we always need practice fields, but they won't be game fields anymore. So uh, we're taking down the uh, the block uh, the block uh, dugouts, opening up the fence, opening up the the park. We are um, also going to take down uh, the score booths if we can, and just kind of open it all up. Our intention is really to have some special events out there this summer as well. It's been amazing just seeing once those fences came down how much more open it is. Um, but that's, that's kind of the update. We're just taking some of the old stuff down and cleaning it up a little bit. Susan, with those fences down and they're, they're going to practice there, is there anything gonna, that's going to keep balls from going to the Cheney Creek? Um, no. 
swim in the uh, hopefully <laughs> distance <laughs> okay i mean hopefully the distance isn't one we have our younger ones practice out there okay it shouldn't so be a problem, it shouldn't then. really yeah. be too much of an issue i think it's about 253 300 feet but to the, thank you so much we'll uh keep an eye on it i know the bigger kids i, I picked up 40 yeah. balls out yeah. of Cheney Creek. They didn't want back. I gave them to your uh, mel Melody. Melody, yeah. yeah. Well, the intention is to really use it for the younger ones now okay. um, for that yeah. reason, so they're not running so far. Yeah. But with Jack Gimmiet online and, and actually Curve Street, we'll be using those for the ball for the games. But thank you. I'll certainly keep a note on that. Any questions on that before we hand it over to uh, back to Deanna? Okay. So the, the next two slides represent the future capital improvement projects. So again, as a reminder, we, these are projects that have been identified as a need for the city of Jacksonville, and we've identified a preliminary scope with a preliminary cost estimate. And so we're going to go into some more details on, on all these projects, but just to kind of give you a lead into some of the projects that we'll be discussing, we've got the downtown rails to trails greenway. We've got improvements at Northeast Creek Park, as well as Richard Wright All-American Park. We've got a Kerr Street Fishing Pier, a New River Waterfront board, Boardwalk Replacement, a Zipline Park. So um, we're going to dive right into this. So the next project we're going to talk about is the Downtown Rails to Trails Greenway. And this can be found on page 102 of your, it's I think the last page. Yep. And again, this, this was the result of the community summit, again, um, always had the desire to have connectivity for our, our greenway. So we've got, um, this project would consist of trying to construct a trail from these two points. Well, we've got the existing trail here ends near um, the elementary school, and then, or the, sorry, thank you, the middle school. And then we've got the Thompson Creek Boardwalk dead ends here at the end of the, the bus parking area. So. The scope of the project is to connect the two. How are we going to connect it? We're not sure yet. <laughs> I mean, and that's that's the quite honest. Um, and so, again, the project starts off as the thought. We want we want to promote connectivity, and so this is the project. And we have identified some preliminary money to do engineering in, in 2017, but that's where we're going to look. And we, you know, we would like the connectivity perhaps to go down East Railroad Street to to Bold Building, which is down in here. Mm -hmm. Then if we could, if we have the area, we can come down <laughs> this way, you know, and then maybe come this way. And then that would allow us that, to start that connectivity to continue going down Court Street, down to Sturgeon City, back to Northeast Creek Boardwalk. But again, it's 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 a thought, it's, it's a concept. And so staff will, will start looking at some of the possibilities of, of making this connection. Did you say Northeast Creek Boardwalk? I'm sorry, Thompson Creek. Okay. I'm jumping ahead on my project. Okay. <laughs> That's fine. I just want to clarify. Thank you. Okay. Uh -huh. All right. So the Northeast Creek Boardwalk or Northeast Creek Park, we actually have a lot going on proposed for this project. So um, these can be found on pages 90 through 91 and 96. So. Um, We've looked at, we've divided up all some components at, the, at this park. For FY18, we are proposing the existing shelter and restroom, um, the playground side of the park is in, it's, it's, it's at the end of its useful life. It, we need to improve upon that. So um, we have a, a template bathroom that we've now constructed at both Wooten Park and at Jacksonville Landing. So the thought is to take that same template and to construct a new one here. So we would demolish the existing shelter and restroom and put back something new. We have, um, I, it's my understanding that recreation's in the process of, of further defining and refining the master plan for this entire park. And so once that has been done, we can start looking at possible locations. Obviously there might be um, some difficulties in the proposed placement, you know, topography, running infrastructure, et cetera. So in FY18, we're looking at on the west side, what we're calling the west side of the park, and on FY17, we're looking at doing the shelter on the east side. Same concept, d demolish what we have and replace back with something um, very similar to what we've already constructed. So we want to we want to redo the shelter and, and restroom on the Corbin side, the playground side, and we're going to come back with, and build a new playground in its place. So we're going to do the shelter and restroom first, and then the playground. 
as you are aware, the Northeast Creek uh, Boardwalk and Bulkhead Project, um, the boardwalk has seen its seen some better days. And so what we are proposing is a full replacement of the entire boardwalk in FY18. And as you may look at it, it's of substantial cost. It's $947,000. And that estimate is based on a, a recent project that we've done with the boardwalk. So. Um, at this point, obviously, we've got a, an existing camo permit that would allow us to go in there. We might have to extend it or, you know, might have to apply for new permits, et cetera. But that is a project that we're um, hoping will go forward in future years. Okay. Are we going to make it out of wood again? Probably, yes. We'll probably spend some extra money and make it out of something that'll last. Mm -hmm. That the plastic they put fences up with now, right? Congress like a bottles, yeah. You so said you got down here useful life 25 years. Mm -hmm. Will that wood last 25 years? It all depends. We actually have a board, a um, at Brookview Force Main, we have it's an aerial force main and it goes over the wetlands and it's on wood pilings. Mm -hmm. Those pilings have been in place for 20 25 years. Mm -hmm. and we're actually under a contract now to wrap them, they're actually in, in good condition but we're wrapping them to get another 20, 25 years out of them. Uh -huh. So, and it's at a substantial lower cost than having to construct a new, a new force main. Oh, yeah. So, but it is, that's one of the things that we'll look at is the types of material, um, location, you know, maybe we don't put it back exactly the way it is. Maybe it goes back something different, but um, for, to get an estimate, what we've done is we've applied a, a per linear foot cost and took the existing boardwalk and just said, it's this many linear feet at this cost, this is your price. Um, so as we go, for, as the project moves closer to the build year, the year that it's funded, we'll be refining that scope to, to get a better understanding of what the needs and desires are for our, our citizens. The next project is over at the Commons at Richard Ray All-American Park, and those can be found on page 88 and 89. So the Richard Ray All-American Park parking side, which is proposed in FY17, that would include the construction of a, about 100 parking spaces. And this is actually a master plan that, of the Commons area back in 2011. So some of these items, again, a master plan is kind of our wish list of how we would like to see this, this park develop. So what you see might not be actually constructed, um, but this shows the general idea of where we would like to put the parking. Again, it's about um, 100 proposed parking spaces. And then at the Richard Wright All-American Park, that is, proposes construction of um, some sidewalks, a shelter, and a restroom. And that shows just kind of a, a general vicinity of where we envision this to go. Again, we have to look at the, how, to get in, how to get water and sewer to that location. So the, these are, it's a placeholder at this point. Uh, the parking area of fiscal year 17 is, I'm trying, let me get, let me get a bit more You're in. trying to figure where it is? Is that, isn't that close to the, the bike trail, the, the, That's the bike the bike trail, trail that runs mm -hmm. through the woods there? Yes. Yeah. Is it, uh, it encompass part of that? Or, it does. or mm -hmm. there being be some kind of a, okay. Yep. Okay. And, and as we, go, as we move forward on the project, those are things that we'll look at of either shifting the, you know, the parking. Right. Yeah, just, there, there we you go. There's another one there, if, if you're familiar with when you oh, come around okay. that corner. Yes, yes. You can see where it also started, or it starts mm -hmm. to drive in, and then there's I stops see. right there. Yeah, That's okay. another potential. So, I mean, there, it's, a, it's fluid at this concept. Okay. It's very, yes. very okay. fluid. So there's <coughs> subject to change without a doubt. Okay. The idea is just parking. Well, I was looking at it, because that's, that's, that's the first one, as, you know, which has to be sooner, so right. to speak. Mm -hmm. uh, and I, I, okay, okay. Yeah, just a comment, those other facilities that show up there that aren't there, <laughs> yeah. uh, that parking would make sense because it would support those facilities. Right. Nothing there right. now except the bike trail. Right. Uh, a comment would be if we do do a parking there, there has to be some provision for a crosswalk or right. something to get people mm -hmm. back over to the main park. Yeah, no, I think that this other parking that's on that side would probably Demo, be. Uh, that would be your, our first. That, that this would be the priority, yeah. this that area. Would be no, that would right there? On, okay. no. on this side, on the side of the, of two. Richard Ray. They can walk right, right. right. Okay. Yeah. That would be our um, our first obvious, okay. you know, concept okay. there. Susan, can you show us on this map where the, the labyrinth is? Um, the labyrinth would be, uh, yeah, right in that area. That's a horrible little 
whatever that is. <laughs> so we're right, right in there? It's probably right in there. Okay. Yeah, because the restrooms, you see the restrooms, that little dot yes. right there is yes. the restrooms. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so it's right in that in that vicinity. But you can okay. see this is a concept plan that, uh, it's again, evolved. our wish list because yeah. down here on the corner, you see all sorts of stuff down there. And, and uh, a parking, you know, parking up here, mm -hmm. parking there. There's all sorts of great ideas. <laughs> but. Well, even this stuff right down here. Yeah, down here. All of that. That's where the main first seafood place is going to work. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the Mayfood Seafood Restaurant. Yeah. I've got a, I've got a question. Contingency, is that money you just put aside in case you need more money or what? Kind of, yes. Um, as we do construction, there is always something that we didn't plan for. Right. Um, and it could be is, uh, that the dirt is not suitable where we have to remove and replace it or we didn't plan for um, additional concrete or it, it's just kind of a catch-all um, and the contingency applies for the entire project. So if we run over our estimates for design, we have the contingency. Um, Wait, we, do you turn it back in if you don't use yes, it? Yes, sir. Yes. It, um, in this particular case, we, we turn it back into whatever the funding source is. So if the funding source is general okay. fund, which is mainly yeah. what mo mostly funds the recreation projects, it would go back to general fund. Okay. So at the end of the project, or at, at the completion of the project, when we are completely done, We've paid everything. There's nothing outstanding. Right. Then we tell finance to close the project, and the money goes back to general fund. Okay. Um, at Jack A. Miet, we're in all tense purposes. We're done. We've got one small thing we're going to do here um, as far as seal coating the, the existing parking area. But for the most part, that project's done. Well, council has given money specifically for that project, so. That money could be used to <coughs> offset some of the costs for the splash pad, mm -hmm. and but we're also looking at trying to install some of that um, the right. trail that we had identified on the master plan. So we're look we, we continue to we spend as much money as we can. Trust me. <laughs> <laughs> no, but we you know we say within budget we make cuts where where we need. If we have a, a scope for a project that exceeds our budget, then we go back and we reevaluate the scope. Is the scope too big? What can we, can we do this in phases? Um, can we use a different types of materials? Or if it is what the cost is, what the cost is, then we go to management and say, in order for us to con construct the project, this is how much money we need. And then from there, we decide, do we push it out or do we go forward? And usually, you know, obviously that the, the capital improvement plan is, is adopted with the budget every year. So council would give us that guidance. So the next project that we have is the Kerr Street Fishing Pier. And that's found on page 94. And we're actually just extending on an existing pier, about 75 feet. Um, again, this was one of the, the desires of the community summit, what was to have more fishing opportunity. And so this would result in the extension of the pier and some corrective work as shown um, to make some repairs on the, on the wooden ramp transition as, as well as some concrete work. So the estimated cost for this project is about $75,000 and it is proposed in FY18. Is that also referred to as Willingham Park? There is that uh, really yes. Willingham? Yes. Okay. Was there going to be any additional parking as part of that project? No, no? sir. Okay. No, it was just an extension of the fishing pier. Um, and this is a, actually the, the New River Waterfront Boardwalk is a new project for this fiscal year. Um, this area that we're talking about is where, in all intents purposes, where the old boat ramp was, right, right by the USO. Um, back in 1986, the city and the county received a um, land water conservation grant from the federal government in the amount of $50,000. And back then, it was for the construction of bulkheads, boardwalks, a shelter, and some benches. We'll skip forward to today's time, and guess what? Now we want to do some more things for this area. But unfortunately, because of the grant, we had some stipulations. And so we're working with Onslow County, as well as the grantor, to see if it's possible for us to do a conversion. And the conversion would take all the land use restrictions that are on the property shown in blue and green, and convert that to Jacksonville Landing. Right. So um, Onslow County and the city of Jacksonville are going through an, um, a process to do appraisals and land values. 
Um, and so they're working through all that. But the hope is, is that we'll be successful and, and, and the land conversion will be approved. If it is approved, that opens up multiple opportunities for redevelopment in downtown. Um, and so and that's our hope, is that we can, we can move, the, move the restrictions to Jacksonville Landing because that's going to be you know, the, the new boat ramp for this area, not the area that we've got identified. Right. But that process, working with um, the grantor as well as the federal government and getting the necessary documentation, you know, we're looking at anywhere between 8 to 12 months. So, but it is a project. But once we can get through that, our goal is to look at just replacing all of the boardwalk in, in, in Bulkhead. So, again, the cost estimate that's shown, which is extremely high, is just based on a per linear foot cost. Uh Correct me if I'm wrong, but uh, in one of the newspaper articles, I think Dr. Woodruff mentioned that there had been some interest somewhere in there from a from a private yes. uh, entity. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know if it was hotel or, or what it was, but again, depending on all of these mm -hmm. things you just mentioned as to whether or not they could even in, entertain. Correct. Yeah, the, the first hurdle that we have to overcome is is having the conversion approved. Once right. it's approved, yeah. it opens up multiple and endless possibilities for this area to, mm -hmm. you know, and again, I, it could be that the city pays for the, the bulkhead and, and boardwalk replacement to something similar to what we have in Wilmington where you've got um, construction, commercial development right at water's edge and, and we just maybe we just sell the property and they develop everything. Um, but in order for us to get forward <coughs> with that project, the conversion has to get approved. And so again, right. it, we're in a holding pattern at this moment. And one thing that we could do also is if we, if we did sell any land, then that, the proceeds from that could go to offset this project as well. But all of that is, right. you know, Right. Wishful thinking right. and, and hope that it all that it all um, works out. Yeah, that's a teeny tiny parcel of land. It's, it's not very big. It's not. Yeah, it's not very big. But yeah, so some of these folks can do a lot with a little. I mm -hmm. guess is a better way to describe it. Well, yeah. we've got and and it you know we've we just the county demolished their the old jail so that freed up a lot of additional space as well so it could be that we recombine multiple parcels down there, you know from a developer standpoint I mean I think the options are there it just depends on what cost because right. this is no longer there right yeah this this all that's all open that's now. gone that's the old jail oh, mm -hmm. the old jail. So another new project for the CIP is a zipline park, and that's found on page 95. Um, this again is an idea. It, the idea is, you know, I, I, that we think Jacksonville could benefit from a zipline park. Um, although we don't have the the topography that would make it very easy for us to construct, the cost really comes from constructing the tower to get us the height. Yeah. Um, but again, we really don't know what we want yet. Um, it, I, at this point, it's an idea. So uh, the cost that's identified in the CIP is, is, is a guess at this point. Um, it really depends on the complexity of the design, the, the size, the, um, the terrain, and what features we'd like to have. Um, I mean, they've, they've got simple zipline parks where, as you see on the right, or this one with the child, it's relatively low to the ground and that would be minimal cost versus something that is where you actually construct the tower and it is um, maybe would be more for an adult. So at this point, it's an idea. We haven't really identified who our main clientele would be for this for this area or a location. It's just it's an idea of something that we would like um, Jacksonville to one day have. So as a reminder, the capital improvement plan is a tool and it helps us to prioritize and identify projects. Um, our plans over a five-year period, but there are other municipalities that have a much larger planning period, 10 to 15 years. It helps us identify um, projects, estimated costs, and um, available funding sources. So what we typically do in the CIP process in, in January to February, we, we draft the CIP and we actually present it to council. We've already presented it to council and they've already given us some feedback such as 
the splash pad to go ahead and move that up one, one fiscal year. But the, the CIP is normally adopted with the budget every, every fiscal year. And again, the only year that gets the money is whatever that fiscal year that we have. So in this particular case, the projects in FY16, any new money, those are the only projects that would get the, the available funding. So I hope you found this useful. I know I gave you a lot of information <laughs> about um, the projects that are identified in the next five years. But if you guys have any questions, I'd be more than happy to answer them. I've got this engineering and design. Is that, that's not done in house? You put that out for bids. It depends on what the project is. If it's if it's um, a structural or if um, if it's not if it's we do civil engineering, so we can do line work, water and sewer, norm something like that. Then we we'll do that in house. But if it's something um, much greater, if it's structural, such as um, at Phillips Park then we'll, we'll contract that out because that's not our engineering discipline. Well, wouldn't it be a lot cheaper if you could do it in-house? It all depends. We normally don't, we don't have a lot of structural components for our, for our projects. We do a lot of water and sewer projects. So we do do those in-house, majority of them. Um, if it's a, a pump station that's rather complex, like we did the Henderson Drive pump station a couple years ago, we did that out of house because of just the sheer nature and size of it. That would it would take us um, it would take us too long to design it and at a much greater cost than if we just contracted it out. But the uh, the Barn Street and Jarman sewer work that we're ha that we're doing now that's something we designed in house. I mean we work very closely with our outside consultants. Um, we might not be the ones who are actually drawing it, but we are giving them thoughts and considerations on methodology and constructability. This is also where architects have to sign off on your stamp. Yes. This is where all the plans have to be um, stamped and all of those sort of folks stamp on the plans. So if it's any kind of building con, you know, construction, all of that has to come out of house because they don't have any um, architects or engineers, you know, to stamp off, sign on the building construction sort of mm -hmm. structural. Right. Do we assume that we can reuse something that's already been approved by an engineer, um, like little bridges? Well, we've got um, yes and no. Um, usually, you have to ask the the engineer if you can you can reuse it. So, for instance, on the the bathroom template that we have, so example. we paid kind of a one time fee up front for the construction of the of the the project at Wooten, and we went back to him and said we would like to use the same design. Here, we constructed it one time, we learned we need to add this and change this, and so we improved upon it, and we paid a very small fee for him to give us new plans for the landing. And so the same concept, we've, again, constructed it, we've learned from it, we want to make some more changes, and so the next project will go back to him and say, can you make these few changes, and he'll give us a new set of plans. But it, it really, most of the design firms will tell you on the plans and on all of the construction documents that it's project specific because it's their liability for them if if they use it if you take one set of plans and reuse it on another project without their approval it's a liability for them but we've done that with some of the bridges the bridge over at uh richard ray we've used that one to your point to your question we've yeah, used there's that one in the comments too that's uh, that yep. big long one mm -hmm. yeah yep. Do you use uh, the master plans to, to identify and prioritize? We do. I mean, because you, you, you got a master plan for uh, parks and recreation, you got a master plan for the trails. They, they uh, really do all tie in. They do. Um, they do. Uh, we do have several of them. Yeah. But, for example, the one you see there at, at the um, Commons, uh -huh. you can't really go forward and get some of those. Um, you have to show that you have the master plan. So right. in order for us to get a parking lot at Richard Ray, right. we have to show that it's in the master it's plan. It's in the master plan. You know, right. and then that master plan is already included in our overall uh, master plan. So if, for example, there's an amenity, because, you know, our master plan is the levels of service. So if our levels of service show that we need, um, I'm not, tennis courts, which we don't, but it's an easy example. If we needed tennis courts at a park, we would use that to say, okay, this park needs a map, just the park needs a master plan. And then that would show a tennis court, for example. And then we would use that document because each site, in order for you to get your site permitting and your, um, I'm not the best, but your permitting, basically, you have to show where your 
water and your sewer and all of that sort of stuff is going to come and, in. Yeah, and to, to add on to that, uh, the master plan allows, it sets the guidelines over a multi-year period over multiple people, what the vision is for that particular park. And it also helps plan when it, we need to show that we're spending money in all of our parks. And so this helps justify the level of service that's required and, and what improvements need to be made. The uh, playground surfaces, mm -hmm. I could swear we've seen this yes. several times before, but <laughs> the years weren't pushed out as far. Uh, They're getting adjusted. Okay. They're getting adjusted and it looks like um, you, and you have seen lots of them, and that's because there's so many playgrounds. So they've get they've been uh, adjusted accordingly to which park and, and where they've gone. But yeah, they do get they do get pushed back. They get moved around according to what comes up, and we reevaluate every year. Every every year has another pri you know other things come up or other needs have to be moved around. But playground surfaces are a need, and we want to get them done. It's just a matter of when we do. So. Yeah. All right. Mm -hmm. Mr. No. No. Very good job. Yeah. Yes, yeah. yeah. Thank you so much for coming. Yes. We're yes. very, very informative. Yeah. Anytime, and you know, and I, I was talking to Susan and Michael, and we can, you know, I know this is something new for this committee, but certainly, if you would like for me to come back and next year, and kind of do the same, same idea, same concept, yeah. and. Um, and you'll see how sometimes the CIP changes drastically. Yeah. It just depends on what yeah. happens um, over from year to year. But thank you so much for having me this evening. Yes. Yes. Very informative. Yes. We appreciate it. It's, yes. it's amazing when you see all the different things. It, it gets you thinking about things. For example, when you, you mentioned the zip line, I totally forgot it. But then I'm thinking, well, you know, at Northeast Creek, we have this huge, huge area mm -hmm. that we can't do anything with for a while. Yep. And it gives us time to start putting some things together that yeah. may be a place that we decide right. we can mm -hmm. do something with. It's, it's virtually untapped. And, yeah. Yeah. Uh, and you've got time to make sure it gets done. Yes, sir. So that's one of the reasons why it's good to have this planned out year to year. Mm -hmm. And I, I know how things get moved around because sometimes some things are more pressing than others. Yeah. They just need to be done right now. <laughs> well, and I will just say this, um, you know, we have a snippet of the book. You can already see that there are yeah. eight pages, There's pages 80 <laughs> to 100. It's a book. And yeah. when you see it in comparison, that has a lot to do, you know, each year council has to agree on all the different projects, mm -hmm. all the different projects. I, I have. So it's it, been several years back. Actually, sit in on the uh, the meeting they have, where all the different departments come and mm -hmm. present their what they want included in, in, yes. in page forty five. <laughs> yeah. 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 Well, um, for those of you who might be interested, um, I believe we were trying to put the proposed CIP on our city's web page. Oh. So, and it's a PDF document that you <coughs> would, um, have an opportunity to review the entire book. Oh. But it it uh, it. Projects are shifted and changed accordingly, um, based on need. Um, so, but again, thank you for having me this evening. Yeah. Thank you, thank you so much for coming. Coming. Appreciate it. Stay or yes. go, however you want to do it. Thank you. Um, but I'll piggyback on that real quick, and then we'll move on, and I'll be done um, on our end. But um, all of the uh, budget workshops, which is where we do talk about the, all the upcoming uh, budget uh, CIPs. We'll be doing a presentation to council to give them updated on how we are doing and, and, and moving forward. All of those will be in Tuesdays. So every Tuesday in the month of April, you can tune in or take a look or, um, you know, that's kind of what, what, the, what the plan is. The schedule right now for council is we'll be in here on Tuesday afternoons um, before meetings. So, um, Yes, and then also in April, you will be invited to two exciting events. Uh, April 7th is going to be our grand, well, I shouldn't say grand opening, our field opening at Jack Emmett. So save the date, please. Invites to follow, but we are working um, diligently on all of our fun details and having a nice event on April 7th. So at Jack Emmett, please, 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 we'd love to have each of you there. It'll be at 4.30. And that is to uh, invite everybody to come take a look at all the nice hard work that our engineering department has done, because that's exactly how these projects get done. 
Um, we're just the ones that say, yes, we like it. Yes, 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 <laughs> yes, yes. But it's Deanna and her team that has to really do all of the all of the work that it gets that needs to get those projects done. And yay, she can put Jack Emmett to bed and we can start playing on it. <laughs> it's so exciting. We're thrilled. So April 7th, 430. It is before a workshop meeting, so it'll be fairly you know swift as far as being there and then council will have to come back here and and right. talk about budget but uh save the date we are um excited about a, a good afternoon out there and some neat folks just to help us out with opening up that field um also april 14th save the date is going to be the advisory dinner for you folks for you lovely volunteers that give your time and effort to giving us your feedback every year we do a banquet I don't know what it'll look like on the seventh, on the fourteenth, or where it'll be, but I do know it, at this point it's on the fourteenth. So save the date on that one too. So you've got two Tuesdays, so you'll be busy. Um, those are just kind of some housekeeping things. If everybody has those jotted down, I'll give you an update on some other fun stuff. Um, Phillips Park we mentioned, so I won't go into too much of that, but I welcome any feedback. Michael's guys are not done. The weather has kind of held them up on some stuff, but they're still working on that. One thing Michael definitely has been working hard on, and that is the Beirut, uh, the Beirut Memorial Grove. An update on that uh, is that they are going to move forward with the purchasing of those trees. It's called a pistache. It's a, it's a pistache. It's Yes, it's a pistache. It's the name of it. It's a beautiful tree. It's very hardy. Everybody has really gotten excited that it's going to be in a colorful mode in October when we want to obviously have some folks uh, for for that service in October. But he is going to be personally handpicking those trees, which we feel important to do. 300 trees. Him and the horticultural will be going down to Tennessee to the vendor and picking those trees up. So the goal is to be there on the end of April pick those trees and have them um, I wish Michael were um, so get them delivered I'm going to be very uh, wide on this range in the May time frame May June and then hopefully plantings will be July August again I want to uh, I don't want to commit anything because Michael's not here but so please forgive me but it is I think it's his goal to get those trees in um, the summer months without a doubt by August so we're really excited. He'll be him, him and the um, horticulturalist and all of those folks that are involved in that project are um, you know ready to, to get that project going, and it'll be pretty. It'll be very nice. So there's that, and then obviously Phillips Park. His guys have been working on. Um, okay, pickleball. I won't. You won't hear me mention it until after the next meeting. But it is next. Uh, it's April. Getting my dates all mixed up. It is uh, March sixth. It is starting on Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, and I have some really neat stats for you. Okay, 136 participants. That is up from 123 last year, so we've already grown. 32 of those folks are in Onslow County. 23 are out of Virginia. Great day. The, there's about 60 or so that are outside of the Onslow and Virginia area that are just in raw, um, other areas of North Carolina. We have a great contingent group of uh, folks from New Bern. I think I mentioned to you that they were getting competitive and coming down, so we got 20 <laughs> folks coming in from New Bern. Uh, but overall, we have a, a 225 events that will be played. So you can play an individual plus a double plus a something else. So, 225 games will be played over the course of the weekend. We have five courts going and we start 9 a.m. on Friday. Mm -hmm. So if any of y'all would like to come out starting the tournament, they start on Friday. We expect to go all day Friday and all day Saturday. On Saturday, it'll be 115 games played. On Friday, it'll be about 95. So the athletic folks have been working hard. He has an, an, a very impressive schedule of games at this point. He does a good job with that. So pickleball, so where is that? <laughs> 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 uh, other than that, we are just plugging along. Registrations have started for spring. It's uh, hard for folks to think about t-ball, but it's coming. It is coming. Spring is going to be here, so it'll be 
um, a good time for the kids to get out there. So hopefully parents will think about that once this cold snap gets past us and they'll get their kids registered. Um, as you know, we are open on snow days for anybody that might be watching. Um, we open up early for our before school program. So if the kids are in a before school program, we are there. They can come in early on that one as well. And then for the days that they're out of school closed and we are open as a government, we do open up uh, the Commons Recreation Center. So we open up from 7.30 to 6 on those days. So if, if it's automatic, if, if the government is open, we are open and that building is open. So you don't even, you can just bring your kids, register them. It is $10 for, um, for all of the kids and it's actually free for our after school program participants. They're in our program and so we, we give them that courtesy, but it's open to everybody um, and it is, it's got a nominal fee to it, but we wanna be a service to the kids and the parents. If they have to go to work, we want their kids to be in a safe place all day, having a good time, not zoned down on the tube or sleeping or eating all day. <laughs> Just 10 bucks for all day? All day. That's a bargain. Yeah. Susan, I noticed you have a, uh, uh, a program for walking inside um, in the morning. We do. Mm -hmm. um, does that run, like, what does it run, like 7.15 or 7? seven we open up right before seven o'clock they really just go straight over to the gym and start walking when do you, do you run them out at eight fifteen? no we don't run them out at all uh, pickleball gets in there uh -huh. so as soon as pickleball starts getting in there and setting up their courts they tend to i mean we have some people that walk around them which is fine they're welcome to go they can go all day if they want i don't imagine they want to be um, once those balls start flying from pickleball but no we don't really run them out they welcome to walk anybody's welcome to come throughout the day Anytime, it really it's just a matter of working working out what else is it going on in there because the gym stays busy i just say that because i know some people walk around the pond but then on some really brutal we do and days. they're more than welcome to come inside it is two seconds to sign in and then they can go walk we just like to have an idea of who is in the building because it's not manned but the senior center is. i would just share home with it uh, the mall is open as well in the morning uh, generally seven seven o'clock they're in there and there's a bunch of them there yeah there's too. a bunch but if you're already at the commons thinking you're going to walk around the right, lake right right all of a sudden it starts yes. raining or it starts that's a great or point you just decide it's just too cold yes, yes. that's uh, a great point yes. not for me because i'm not going to be walking around <laughs> <laughs> i do enough walking it's good, up and downstairs yeah no but that's a great point if they're outside and they don't then want to yeah. get in out of the weather then they certainly can come in yeah okay that's good without a doubt any questions for me recreation or parks as best as i can answer for michael anything else good job well then i'm i'm good done thank good you again for deanna and i look forward to hearing those reports thank you okay is there any more new business or old business okay the planning advisory board liaison report it's me it's me homer <laughs> um I, I thought i would take uh, advantage first to tell you that for most of the businesses that open up that we find out about, we usually find those out through our um, our weekly development plan, and they send the email it to us, and then they'll tell us whether somebody's looking at something or, or talking about something. And I'm a little hesitant to mention some place that is just looking at getting into a building because I don't want to make it tough for them if they decide not to. Um, at our planning board meeting, we spend a lot of time discussing things uh, like zoning amendments and uh, special use permits and things of that nature. For example, in the last, in our last planning board meeting, we spent a great deal of time talking about the zoning requirements as it pertains to things like homeless shelters. Um, as the current ordinance reads right now, homeless shelters can't be within so many feet of each other and they can't be within so many feet of an area that's zoned residential. Notice I said zone residential, not necessarily used residential. So there are some areas in the city where it may be beneficial for us to have a homeless shelter, but because of some zoning issues, it would be a hard thing to do. So we were looking at approving an ordinance that would allow city council to take a look at some exceptions in some uh, strange cases, for example, down in New River Shopping Center. There's some areas down there that would benefit from the homeless shelter uh, and their property that may be available, but because it's near or close to an area that's zoned residential, even though it's not may not be used residential, 
um, they weren't allowed to do it because they couldn't violate their own rules. So we were looking at some flexibility so the city council could, uh, you know, still it's still going to come before uh, planning board and council on the site plan, but it would be not as etched in stone as it was before. So right. that's that's the major thing that we did at this last planning board meeting. That's it. Okay. Any questions at home? Okay. There's no council uh, liaison report. Uh, member comments and park reports. Uh, any comments before we go through the parks? Anything, anything anybody would like to add tonight? Okay. Park reports, Wooden Park. Uh, it was great. Of course, there was two people there, mother and her daughter. It was cold. Restrooms were locked. Hmm. Well, was it during the really cold snap? Because we did turn the right. water off. Yeah, uh, I figured out. We turned the water that. off in all of the parks so that the pipes. I just wouldn't want to bring freeze. that up. Yeah, I'm glad you. They should be unlocked now, though. I know they below freezing. Yeah. Yeah. Um, they did get unlocked as soon as the weather lifted, but um, that's that could be why. Yeah. But I'll follow up. That's fine. Uh, let's see, Homer. Ready? Yep. Yes, well, be before I get into my parks, I'll make a, a comment. Uh, someone brought to me about the bathrooms at Richard Ray. Okay. Um, the first thing they said is those are always very clean. So cleanliness is not a problem. But uh, whether it's because of the structure of the bathroom or the location of where it's at, there seems to be a humidity problem. Okay. And the toilet paper tends to break up on the roll. It's okay. that humid and it seems a little dark in there so okay. whether that's something that can be you know both can be rectified at the same time maybe yeah. brighter and drier would both work but uh, again they wanted to remind you they want they reminded me they said look they are very clean they're, they're that that's okay. so we're doing a good job cleaning it so just maybe some of what something engineering wise that we can do one other thing too homer is actually could they not go over to the common to the uh yes gym Absolutely. they could yeah uh, I mean, that's an alternative mm -hmm. if, if they really have an ongoing problem with that. But, it, but again, if it's, if, it's, if it's a problem where it affects, like, the toilet paper and, and stuff like yeah. that, then potentially yeah. from a, a, a maintenance standpoint, it can affect the metal structures in there, Correct. too. Because if it's moist, it's moist. And uh, yeah. you'll have a lot of rusting and things of that nature. So it may be that yes. by, by mentioning it now, maybe they can, maybe they've just saved us a headache later. Oh, that's great. Or as you pointed out about when we review a, a, a design, I know that was one of the earlier designs we mm -hmm. used for restrooms, and now we do something different. That yep. one uh, actually comes in on a truck. Oh. Mm -hmm. That's what I thought. It's a precasted building. Really? Yeah, and we, and we well, I thought it was learned interesting. from that one because I don't think we'll go down that road again. So. <laughs> but you mentioned that each each time you yep, the next get ready to do another is, one, is there's a lot of little tweaks, you know, that are... Mm -hmm. But when they which, first did that, I thought it was the coolest thing. I thought, wow, they're just dropping that thing down they and do. it's ready to go. Yeah. And and you don't think about it, but it, you know, it made yeah. sense. It was economical, yeah. yes. you know, and it yes. certainly was nice looking. Yeah. Like I said, it's, it's oh, clean, yeah. Yeah. and uh, we do a good job maintaining it. So, to my parks, um, Branchville was fine. There was nobody there. Sherwood Forest, I happened to be there on the one. You know, we did have some nice days, Saturday and Sunday. So <laughs> there were actually people out there using the facility. So Sherwood was really nice. Um, I happened to drive by Phillips Park and stop in at night. I saw the lights on, which made me think about someone mentioned in a report that they were thinking about one day taking the lights out. Um, I saw lots of people out there practicing and having a good time. JASA is JASA uses those fields. I figured they would. Yeah. And, uh, and it, they will continue. It, it's amazing how taking down the block structures makes that area look a whole lot nicer. Okay. I'm, I'm very much uh, pleased with the direction it's moving now. We're doing as much as we can with the hand that we're dealt. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Thank you very much. You. That's it for me. Okay. Steve? Uh, I went to Kerr Street and Riverwalk in Willingham uh, last week when it was freezing cold and there wasn't a soul out there. <laughs> uh, and going through there, it's like, we really spring to come back because it, yes. I mean, it's a great park. It just, there's no color in it right now, but nothing that we can do about that. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Northeast Creek, uh, was there a couple weeks ago, flying kites with the grandkids. 
Uh, so I guess it looks like you had a big pile of imported clay to put on the mm -hmm. baseball field. ball fields. Yeah, mm -hmm. all right. So that's there. Uh, on the playground side, the, uh, I don't know what it is. They got the little animal characters and there's like four yeah, things. Yeah, the little bouncy things. The things it, it's like sinking into the ground. It doesn't really bounce anymore. Okay. Yes, we have. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and then the other one that's got two, it, it could be kind of, you could move some of that sand around a little bit because it doesn't move all the good either. Okay, great. Uh, there were a lot of people out there that day and tons of people playing uh, Frisbee golf. Great. It, it looked great. Today it didn't look that great because it was all wet. <laughs> <laughs> it was really wet. Yes. That's it. Okay. Yes, I'd say so it's the same thing for Sturgeon City. Uh, uh, I was out there today after it got down to about 38 or whatever it was and that wind was blowing and it was me and the dog was <laughs> what was out there. But it is, like you say, it's still extremely wet and I know everybody is waiting for the sap to start rising, the grass to start growing to get rid of some of that water. Um, the trail looks fine. Um, Woodlands Park looks fine. Uh, there are quite a few twigs, branches. These, some of these windy days we've had here recently, they, uh, they get rid of a lot of the dead stuff, you know, so to speak. And uh, that's just part of the process. So other than that, they were fine. That's all I had. Okay. Jim? Yes, I stopped by Northwoods uh, last week just before the after school program was getting ready to kick off. And uh, Stephen, who I guess is the uh, manager over there, gave me a nice walk through and we talked about several things. Uh, very clean. And I didn't make it over to Brook Valley until this afternoon. And big surprise, there wasn't a soul there. <laughs> but it was very clean. Uh, I mentioned in the last report that the, uh, uh, the water fountain, the, uh, the nozzle, and yeah. the spigot, it is loose. Uh, and I don't know if they need to put some grout or something in there or some, uh, uh, some masonry or something to tighten that back up. But yeah. somebody could reach in and I actually pull it up about two inches. I didn't want to pull too hard because it <laughs> might come off my hands with a big, yeah. big stream, but uh, yeah, that's, that's loose. Stabilize it, so to speak. In fact, I'm surprised it wasn't turned off because with the cold weather we've had, mm -hmm. that's all I got. Thank you. Anybody else have anything before we entertain a motion? Anything else? I have a question. Okay. Su Susan, um, do we have a um, I'm asking this for a reason, I guess. Do we have a Wi-Fi at uh, Senior Citizen Center? We do not. Oh, no, sorry. Reason I ask is I, I I know a few years back I visited the uh, the Recreation Center. I guess it's at Newport, and I noticed that they had free Wi-Fi or they had Wi-Fi around their Senior Citizen Center because I actually used it to get online and you know send some stuff in. Um, I'm just asking for point of reference. We, uh, we have looked into it, but we have not gotten it yet. It's a, a security thing from mm -hmm. IT, but we're, we're looking at ways to kind of to amend that. So I'll follow back up with IT. I appreciate you asking for it. That'd, that'd be great if I can get that ball started back up. <laughs> Thank you. Anything else? Entertain a motion to adjourn? Motion to adjourn. Second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed?